on to the next part now with my loco. Um, my last clip you'd have seen me doing my, my valve assembly components. Uh, you take a look back at them if you want. That's all. I've got it all assembled now. And I also mentioned in my last video I'd got to finish these connecting rods off by milling a little oil well in, in, the, in that part of the connecting rod on both sides and the phosphor bronze bush. I've done them and I've made some little brass covers for them oil wells if you can see them. Let's have a look. Little brass covers and they're held on with a 10BA screw and a little hole in the centre just to pump your oil in to fill it up. So I've done that on both sides and everything's connected up now. I'll just zoom out a bit. So moving on to the actual reversing lever and its stand. So I've got to make a support bracket to clamp onto the side of the frame to support that reversing stand. Then I've got to do the actual reversing stand, um, the reversing lever and then the latch and all its components and obviously the reach rod then which goes from the reversing stand to this bracket on the slide so I had a, a rummage round today round my boxes and my drawers and found all these bits of plate out and I've managed to find uh, some appropriate plate now to make the uh, the support bracket and the actual reversing stand. I've got these cut out now and I've got to braise these together. This is for the stand. So that's going to be brazed on there like that. That's going to be brazed on there. And then this other part's going to be brazed on something like that. And all that's going to clamp onto frame then to support the reversing stand. Then I've got some plate cut now for the reversing stand itself. That's three pieces. So I've got to machine all this up now and put them that radius on. And uh, put all them slots in with the lever slots into different positions. That piece is going to be for the bottom. And then that piece clamps onto the side of that with a couple of spaces in between for the lever to run in between. So I'm going to make a start now uh, brazing that up and machining the actual stand. Right, I've managed to get me my, uh, my support bracket all fitted together and how I've done it I've, I've drilled two roll pins into the plate and, and knocked them in to, to hold it in position while I braise it. You've just got to make sure everything's square and to the relevant position where it fits onto the frame which is five eighths that way uh, and three quarter up I think up from that face there up. So I'm going to braise that, that on next, but before I do that, I've managed to get the actual reversing stand together, and again I've used two roll pins to hold it in position while I braise that joint, and I've got the second part of the um, mechanism where the, where the grooves, grooves are for the handle to fit onto, for its different positions. I've got that plate bolted to the first plate now, and when, when, it's, when it's all assembled, there'll be two spaces in there for the handle to fit in the middle. So while that's bolted together, I'm going to machine this radius on. And to do that, you've got to drill a sacrificial hole in this 
stand in the plate there to get your one of your jaws of your chuck in to set it up to do this radius I'll just zoom in a bit closer to that yeah so your jaw is going to fit into that hole that you're going to drill so you can set this set this up to machine that radius and then once I've got that radius machined I can then put the slots in which are there you can't quite see it can you which are there okay just for anybody that might be uh, you know fairly new to doing lathe work I just thought I'd show you this setup I've drilled an hole in the plate like I explained previously here's the plate so you have to drill an hole two and a quarter up from the centre of the pivot point where the handle is going to fit it's like I'm calling it a sacrificial hole so you can get the jaw of your chuck in like that look so that enables you then to set it up in your four jaw chuck and it just misses the bed when they clamp both clamp together like that both them plates so it just misses the bed and you set it up to that pivot that pivot point where you've scribed your radius and the pivot point I don't know if you can see there it's just a centre pop down there I'll eventually put an hole in there that's where the handle and the lever is going to fit and then you, so you just set that pivot point up and then carefully you know make sure everything's clearing and get your four jaws on and then you'll have this radius running true once you set to that and what I've done I've shown where the radius came on my marking out I've just shown the angles off to reduce having to move as much material in the lathe and then I've got a, a tool you don't want a pointed tool because a point's not going to last two minutes with intermittent cutting I've got a radius tool there and uh, you've just got to make sure that everything you know once your tools up to where it's gonna go make sure your saddle is not gonna catch like so and just just do it by hand till you till you've got your settings right and uh, you want to go on a slow speed because obviously everything's out of balance and you're doing intermittent cutting so uh, I'm on a an average speed if you're not happy with this speed that I'm going at you'll have to if you're on a Myford you'll have to put your back gear in and slow everything down a bit more so I'll just uh, I'll just show you what I'm doing then and I'm only taking very light cuts probably five or ten hours at a time and I'm feeding it in by hand because I always say it's like when I'm riding my motorbike you get a, you get feedback from the road on your motorbike it's same with lathe in my case I get feedback from that and you can you can it gives you prior warning if anything's not not happy if you feed it in by hand I mean if you're confident to do it with with feed all well, well and good so I'm just coming now down to this radius here look when me, when me cut takes all the material, starts to take the material from that very top I'll know I'm down to my radius then because you've already scribed a line on it and you're just following that line there's just a little mark there but it's nothing that that'll polish out 
and I'm down to my line. In fact, I can just I can just see my line. I can afford to take another couple of thou. That's it. Right, so I'm down to my radius now. Both my plates are identical so when I get my spacers in they're both going to be identical I've just got to now uh, mark it off and, and put them slots in I'm over in my milling machine now and uh, I'm fortunate to have this dividing head so I've just transferred my me, me four jaw chuck from my Myford screwed it onto my dividing head and now I'm going to do the slots uh, and basically I'm just setting the the perpendicular line of the centre to the um, at right angles to my milling machine so it's all in, in on the centre line and then uh, I've just put a scriber in my chuck to get my machine over to the centre so I've, I've got my I've got my actual job perpendicular with this square to the miller then I've moved the table over to pick my centre line up and once I've got my centre line it's just a matter of rotating my, my dividing head to the appropriate centre line position of these marks to machine my one eighth slot in. Now if you've not got a dividing head you could uh, but you've got a milling machine you could put it in your in your vice in your miller and draw perpendicular lines up up through the angles where you've got to machine and set them up individually uh, with a straight edge in your vice and, and, and move them over each time to set one up and do it that way other than that like in the book it says you'll have to file it it's just a one eighth by one eighth slot in uh, five positions the centre position and then the three opposite positions line on and now I've got my centre line I'm looking through camera as I'm doing this now I've got my centre line set up with my dividing head I'm just going to leave my milling machine set and then move my dividing head over on that radius to each position right so I've done I've done one side got the grooves cut in one side in the forward position and I'll just uh, make you aware that you'll, you'll see it on your drawing though but the first slot is actually three, six, six, three sixteenths of an inch offset from the cent from the perpendicular centre line from that pivot pivot point. So that's your starting position, three sixteenths offset in the forward position. So once you've got your forward positions done, then working back on your reverse slots, you're working from this off offset one to where you've first the first one that you've machined, which is not in the centre. So I've I'm going back now exactly the same on, on these on, on this side but working from this 3 16 offset. Um, my milling machine's always in the perpendicular line from that pivot point and I'm just turning my dividing head and I'm not I'm not moving any of the other slides only the uh, longitudinal slide just to do my cutting and then you must make sure that your dividing head if you're using one lock it off because you're not actually locating in any of your hole centres in your holes in your dividing plates so it'll have tendency to move if not so I'm just touching on now and, uh, and going down one eighth deep
Actually, that's that one done. I'm just going to move over now for these two. And they're quarter, quarter centres. <clears throat> just got to braise me, me angle, my bottom angle piece on, my, my foot. Just clean all the burrs off. <clears throat> 